Welcome to Optimal Health Weekly with your host, Steve Adams. This podcast is for highly driven professionals, CEOs, and entrepreneurs who know health is the first wealth. Join us each week for a mix of expert interviews and solo episodes on health topics relevant to your busy life. Let's elevate your health together. Our guest today is Dr. Serena Goldstein, uh, who is a naturopathic doctor who guides you to trust and understand what your body is telling you. Dr. Serena has a diverse, deep, and growing knowledge base around natural modalities, conventional medicine, spirituality, and energy medicine modalities, where she seeks to find and address the root cause by creating an individualized plan around natural medicine that also feels like relief. Dr. Serena works with those experiencing weight gain, hormone imbalance, poor sleep, stress, thyroid, mood, and gut health issues who want to learn more of what your body is saying. Dr. Serena has shared her expertise on outlets such as Mind Body Green, Forbes, and Shape.com. She's appeared on the NYU Doctor Radio Sirius XM, written multiple research articles on mind body healing, presented at numerous conferences, and serves on the advisory board as a member of the National Natural Practitioner Magazine. Dr. Serena, thanks for joining us on the Tiger Podcast. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So uh, tell us a little bit about you, just like your personal life a little bit. Let's, uh, I want my audience to know Dr. Serena, just Serena first. And it's so funny you say that because so much of who I am is tied into what I do. Sure. And it, yeah. And at the same time, okay, so a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in the heart of Manhattan, so back in New York City. Um, one of my all time passions, I love to travel. I love mm. road trips. One of my favorite things to do is just put on blasts of music. Like I've driven up and down both coasts before. Not wow. yet done the cross country, but that's <laughs> that, that's somewhere somewhere. It's coming. Planned. Exactly. Sure. Well, you're pretty um, young still. <laughs> fair enough. Um, yeah. So I love traveling, meeting new people, talking to different people. I've been, you know, to different countries. Um, I lived in Ecuador for two months when I was 21. Fun fact: I did a study <laughs> abroad there. Uh, can I ask what are some of the yes. countries you've been to? So, uh, yeah, so Ecuador, um, Israel, so I did the birthright trip there. Um, yeah, sure. As you could see, my last name being Goldstein. Goldstein. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no hiding. No, that's okay. It's wonderful. Yeah. We celebrate yeah. Israel. Celebrate Oh, it. of course. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I've been to France, Belgium, uh, let's see, Japan. So I used to speak Japanese many, mm. many years ago. Um, I've been to many of the islands, you know, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, so Mexico, and then Mexico. Um, I've been to Canada, you know, some of the, so it's like mm -hmm, Vancouver, mm -hmm. BC, and then um, Nova Scotia. So I've been, same thing. On coast Nova to coast, Canada. yeah. Oh, yes. So, and probably a few more. Well, we share that. I, I, I'm much older than you, so I've had time but I've been to 45 countries in my life. And wow. uh, part of it has been driven by, I started um, in my mind anyway, 20 years ago, a microfinance nonprofit. And we have worked in, I don't know, 17 countries and a lot of the former Soviet Republic. So Yagavaruparuski, I speak yeah. a little bit of Russian. Um, okay. And it's been a really cool, uh, it's so great to go around the world and meet different people because it really gets you out of, uh, an American centric worldview, not that America's bad, just that it's nice to broaden our scope and meet more people. Wouldn't you agree? Exactly. And, you know, and then even the people from other parts of the US. Sure. I did my schooling too in different regions. I've lived in other areas mm -hmm. because even within the US, some of the mindsets could be quite different. They're very yes. different. <laughs> That's really enlightened for a Manhattanite too, because, you know, from 
from New Jersey to Nevada, that's flyover country, you know? <laughs> and so for, for some Manhattanites. And so for you to broaden out, that's pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So you, when we, before we started, you were telling me um, that you uh, uh, did really well in undergrad and went, did you go, did you go to naturopathic medical school in Arizona where you did some of your other education or where did? No. So I went to naturopathic medical school in Portland, Oregon. Gotcha. Okay. Got so, it. yeah. So mm-hmm. I will say part of it was the weather. I mean, despite me being in the sunshine state now, um, I was at Arizona State for four years. I was in the honors college there. Uh-huh. And then at that point in time, I decided I didn't want to stay there for another four years to go to right. the school there. But interestingly, when I went up to the school in Portland, Oregon, I actually knew some of the people up there, like some of the students. Mm. already from like certain conferences that I used to go to. Sure, sure. And so there was already another level of familiarity and there was nature and I would be back it's in beautiful. a big, and I would be back in a big city. Yes. And that was really my draw was being yeah. downtown Portland. Which is beautiful and my our one of our physicians at Tiger went to the Arizona NMD school, the naturopathic yeah. med school. And then there's Bastyr University up in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. yeah. So what what drew you, Dr. Uh, Goldstein, to um, go the route instead of going, because I mean, it, the, pe- the thing people don't realize is you had the intellect and the capability easily of going to DO school or MD school, going more allopathic or osteopathic, but you chose naturopathic. Why did you choose that route at that age? Because that's kind of forward thinking for a young person. Yes, it was. So my journey actually began a little earlier, but Mm -hmm. to um, directly answer your question, what had happened was going to Arizona State. So, you know, as I mentioned, where I used to speak Japanese, what had happened was I got into college and I was a psychology major and Japanese minor. Wow. Because I finished with three honors Japanese when I was in high school. So I tested into Japanese too. When the teacher didn't work out, a close friend said to me, why don't you go pre-med? There were no doctors in my family. This was the farthest thing from my mind. Right. Yep. Yep. And so that was pretty much my expression when, when she said that, like, are you kidding me? But there are times all it takes is for someone to believe in you. And right. I thought, well, we- I, I could do more for people. Right. And then that's when I began the pre-med prerequisites, but it was already so late in the term that I couldn't just take biology. So I had to um, take something within the learning community, you know, which is an extra credit where they talk to you about, oh, well, now we have all these freshmen together and here, go make friends kind of deal. Yeah, right. Yeah. Fine. However, this teacher was into natural medicine and one day or about a month later, He says, all right, field trip to the naturopathic school. And it was the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the name prior. Then, then, yeah. Right, Mm -hmm. right. That I know the few name changes. Uh, That's when I walked into the school and I thought, wait a second. I mean, I get to learn all this conventional medicine because psychiatry never quite resonated. I mean, even in growing up you know my mom kept a pretty healthy household so there was already some of that predisposition you know Mm -hmm. again there was more out there psychiatry didn't feel quite right even Mm. you know it's my first passion was psychology back in high school which is what led me on this journey yeah and then on the other side of it i see wait we get to learn so many modalities of natural medicine they said my head has always been just like, oh, what could I learn? What's the bigger picture of things? So I usually gravitated towards the homeopathy, nutrition, botanical yeah. medicine, you know, more of those energy type medicine modalities. And then being able to spend like a half hour to an hour with patients. Oh my God, this is right. great for my Game changer. It's a great yeah. Right. And I was 19 when I fell in love. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't realize that NDs, when they go to a naturopathic medical school, you're getting the first two years, you're getting all the science like an MD or DO. It is, it's an extremely science rooted 
uh, education pathway and it's just not known, you know, and it's going to take 20 years for the public to get educated on it. I, when I was a boy, young, my parents would not go to a DO. They were like, they were quacks. That's what they said. Oh, wow. Even though they had the same medical education, um, but, but it took 25 years. Uh, the osteopathic right. medical schools took a long time. Right. And I, and I, and, and I, I don't know how you feel, but I, I, COVID, I think, was a catalyzing event where people started to look at there has got to be a different way. Um, I am not a person who trashes traditional medicine. There is a place for it, and it's really good when you are in that bucket. But it's not going to be there for you when you're trying to be proactive. I mean, what do you? What is your thought on that? So I would say a lot of it is about intention. Yeah. Because people. You know, because people could also take a look at natural medicine and think, but if I take all the supplements, I'm going to live forever, right? Right. And then all right. my issues are good. And so they may place that same onus. And so this is what I see on natural medicine that that they may place on conventional medicine. And I'm like, well, here's the thing: the two could work together. Sometimes right. conventional medicine really is needed, and it's great at a quick intervention. Right. As you begin like ramping up some of the natural, maybe wait. I don't, I don't want to say waiting for it to work, but <laughs> it takes time. The case, yeah, yeah, there could be there could be a little lag time, you know, for the person to feel <laughs> in the complete relief. So then, eventually, maybe with conventional medicine, either it gets titrated off, or what I would see in practice is that you know some people are on certain psych meds, maybe from when they were teenagers. Right. And they would say to me, I don't want you to touch them. And I'd say, great. We have so many things we could do naturally. And I would just meet them where they are. Yeah, so I agree. I, and I've watched our doctors work with people that had anxiety and panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And they work on the biome over six, eight, nine months. Right. And and then they're able to titrate off some of the SSR mm -hmm. uh, type stuff because their biome is healthy and it's making the dopamine and serotonin that it wasn't making when it was unhealthy. I mean, do you see similar things in your practice when you were given the time? Yes. I mean, I remember, well, especially when I used to work in New York, I would have like almost every other patient coming in on either one or two plus psych meds. Wow. Yep. And unfortunately, a lot of them, you know, had it since they were teenagers. So, you know, they're in their 30s, 40s plus some of it was just fear of coming off of them. Yeah, so that's right. why I would say, okay, that's you know, legitimate. I'll meet you. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. I mean, I'll say meet you where you are. Um, but then I remember one of my colleagues who works a lot with mental health, he, he said he usually waits for the patient to say, okay, let's start the tapering process. And yeah. I thought that was so brilliant. Mm -hmm. Because they'll know. They know their body, right? Exactly. Yeah. And the best I could do is provide that space and say, hey, look, you could trust this natural medicine. You could trust all this advice, but most importantly, they can trust what they're doing because kind of bordering on the spirituality side, if we think of like, okay, if yep. the anxiety is coming from the overthinking the thought, that means they haven't, they haven't really gotten in touch with their intuition. Thoughts. Right. And exactly. so the more we can allow them to step back and hold that space and say, okay, well, what is your intuition trying to say? What is your body telling you? Right. You know, I wanna, I'm gonna, really, yeah. I want to yeah. come back to that and spend some time on that. I want to ask you this question first. I just saw a statistic just in the last three or four years, nationally, the number of people with metabolic dis dysregulation, you know, problems with their lipids or their diabetic markers or hypertension markers went from 87% of the population to 92%. What do you think is going on in our culture that is driving nine out of 10 people to have out of optimal range metabolic markers? So there's also a saying called as above, so below. Say as, that again. As above, so below. Got it. As above, it's, so below. Yeah, it's. I, like I want to say it's one of the Hermetic principles. If you go back into ancient Hermeticism, which are sort of like the laws of the universe. Yep. And a lot of the time, so what that could mean 
is if we think of the chaos that's going on in the world oh. between countries, like on that really big scale, yep. well, where does it start? It starts with us. Yep. So that's chaos inside. And metabolic syndrome is just so many pathways not functioning properly. Right. So I'd say metaphorically, yeah, if there's a lot going on in the world, no one knows what side to take. People could be losing friends, maybe gaining the wrong ones, or maybe they're gaining some, but oh my God, what if their views just flipped? And then, oh, then family's a whole other piece. Those, you know, we've right, heard of, right. you know, families right. getting separated, you know, because over, over political reasons. issues. Yeah, right. Right. And so that kind of discord, well, of course, it's going to stress out the body. If the body's right. stressed out, they're probably not sleeping. If they're not sleeping, they're going to be more stressed. Their hormones are going to get wonky. Yep. You know, then we could talk motivation, you know, and, okay, maybe like the why aren't they doing this? But it may come back to literally where do they go first? We're in it, we're also in a world of so much information, but not no. enough knowledge. Right. You know, not enough knowledge, not enough guidance, you know, then forget about yep. what they maybe talked about on TV because right. TV can spit out so many messages. Okay, fine. They're putting out some supplements now, but still, you know, if that adds to the confusion, then yeah. literally you have people who are like, where do I go? Can I even do this? Who's going to support me? You know, and the questions can go down the line. Uh, right. I mean, we're, you know, I'm 60. So in 1980, when I was 16 years old, a million things could be going on in the world. I didn't know about them unless Walter Cronkite talked about it, you know, on national three television station, news stations. That was it. And <clears throat> life was quieter. It's not that way. It's 24 seven, always on, all these available with social media. And so it activates that sympathetic, that stress response gets activated constantly today where 40 years ago, it didn't. And, and that, that now leads us to problems of the soul because when we're so chaotic, we can't find rest or peace anywhere. And talk about how you integrate mindset and spirit into your practice. Well, one of the questions actually someone asked me was how it even came up that I do work with this in practice. And before I knew let's just say more of the words that I was, you know, even just able to share. It was in, back in 2017, where I had this patient. Again, I tend to get the pretty healthy, somewhat motivated. But yeah. again, it's like the all hands on deck, overachievers. They want to do 50 things at once done yesterday. <laughs> yeah. You're talking to one, so you're, yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so same thing. She was into health. Um, she, you know, had all the supplements and all of that. She was at that time in her early forties going through some perimenopausal type symptoms, you know, the weight, the hot flashes, and there, there were some other things, but also too, she was lacking the motivation, didn't know what to try next. There were so many different programs. She tried all the cleanses and so forth. And throughout our time together, even though we were able to do a little bit of testing, a lot of it was just being able to listen. And we talked mm. about her business and we talked about her relationships. And similar to the question you asked me of who, like pretty much who are you outside of doctor? Yep. Was some of what we were able to get down to. So while we talked about the supplements, how some of those were feeling in her body, we were able to track what her monthly cycle was like, you know, even her sleep on the day to day. Yeah. She, she said to me, I've never learned so much about my body until I began working. Wow, that's neat. And thank you. And I had to think about that to your question. And so the ways that I do that with people is I'm listening to their talk. I'm listening to if any defense mechanisms come up because I do call people out on stuff. I am extremely forgiving when it comes to, oh, they forgot their supplements. They forgot to hand in their diet diary. I have a lot of patients, which again, we may not always have with their selves. So that means I get to reflect this space yeah. and for them to say, 
okay, well, then how can I do better? I also have patients call me out if I wind up giving them too many supplements. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. How can that can narrow- happen. Right. So how can we narrow it down? How can we also get your mindset and maybe some of those old scripts to your next level of health so you will not need those supplements? The other caveat is, you know, which is where this woman also noticed is where I said to her, you will feel the way some supplements will happen in your body. Healing Mm. is not linear. It may be two steps forward, one step back. Sometimes you feel like you fall into a pit but then you'll somehow get your wings afterwards. Sure. And then, and then there will be some that you will like literally feel overall better. And it won't be all of them, but just be mindful of those feelings of where your head's a little clearer. You're taking something and maybe those cramps go away. Maybe your speech is clear or you're remembering things. So there's sure. all these, like, <clears throat> all these little pieces um, you know, ways we can really sit with ourselves and say, how is something affecting us? And then what's our body trying to say? Steve Adams here from Tiger Medical Institute. Do you ever feel like you're operating at less than 100%? It's time to take control of your health with the true health assessment by Tiger Medical. Get comprehensive blood screening to identify hidden health risks before it's too late. Our team of Mayo trained and naturopathic physicians will analyze your results and provide a custom plan to optimize your well being. Don't let underlying issues hold you back. Invest in your most valuable asset, your health. For the price of a daily chai latte from Starbucks, you can gain priceless insights and a roadmap to peak performance. Visit truehealthassessment.com, truehealthassessment.com today and unlock your full potential. Because when you feel your best, you can achieve your best. That's true health. Um, I had on this podcast, um, the director of McLean Mental Health Hospital. He's on, he's in, um, you would know about this. He's, it's in Boston and he is uh, on the staff of Harvard Medical School. Um, Dr. Jeffrey Rediger, and he wrote a book called mm-hmm. Cured. And it was uh, 20 years of research around spontaneous healing. Mm-hmm. And and he's classically trained MD, okay? And so obviously it's gonna, for him, he's gonna naturally, not to overuse that word in light of who I'm talking to here, uh, struggle to accept, you know, what NDs do. And um, what he found in his book was there were four factors that showed up time and again in people who spontaneously healed cancer, diagno- you know, stage four cancers, mm-hmm. really bad stuff. And it was, they, they learned, they redefined their relationship with stress, really talking about autonomic balance. The second thing was, is they had a radical change in their nutrition. So what they fueled the body with. The third thing was they moved, they began to move their body consistently for the first time in their lives. All these things are not news to you. But the fourth one, which is really drives to what you're trying to do, I think makes you unique is uh, uh, it was the resolution of identity and emotional toxicity. And that was consistent when people did that it brought healing to their inner soul and it stopped driving these underlying mechanisms that were making them sick. I mean, what, how, what's your response to that? Yeah, well, actually what it made me think about um, was two things. So um, the first part is in practice, because I do tend to work with more women, but I also work with men, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on how I may feel they're ready or you know what they may be saying to me is, how far we go into spirituality. So this is where I'll start talking about chakras, for example, for anyone listening, these are, you know, seven energy centers that run from the base of our spine to the top of our head. To be honest, we have over a hundred of them, but for the most part, and what we know of, you know, what, you know, we'll Mm -hmm. talk about these main ones, it's like, you know, red being the root, uh, the root, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart chakra, which, com- which helps combine the lower to the higher ones and the throat chakra, the third eye and the crown. 
So with women, what's interesting is, you know, hormones tend to be in the sixth chakra. That's the element of water, emotions. What is society, what's a lot of society, especially here in America, suppress the emotions, keep going. So with a lot of these women, they'll say, okay, well then how many should I take? And what's this supplement? And what's this <laughs> going to do? And give me this. And I'm like, oh, there's a whole person. I'm going to a whole personality you know, quiz with some of them. But it's that whole anger control, there's minimal boundaries, you know, because then you have the overgiving and the people pleasing. And yep, it's like, yep. well, you literally can't have those if you're in it for your health. Like you need boundaries for you. Right. Where it's right. not about keeping people out, but it's like so much of that is the sacral chakra. So it's like, if you have the sacral chakra going, then the throat chakra is going to help open because that's your creativity. So I yeah. literally, you know, recommend it to patients, like go draw something, go do what you used to do when you were a kid, you know, yeah. when you were completely yeah. uninhibited. Yep. Because interestingly, and maybe not so ironically, most, you know, Hashimoto's or even hypothyroid. So that's, so the Hashimoto's yep. is the autoimmune, yep. you know, that, um, the hypothyroid, thyroid's like, trying to make more because these signals aren't speaking properly. It's like if the sacral chakra is kind of blocked, well, the throat chakra is going to be blocked because that's the speaking and the expression and the listening right. to oneself. Yeah. And well, most of it's in women. So that's sort of, you know, like, yeah, women really being able to speak their truth, do what they and, want in this world. So, so And I'll tell you that they and, and people of different religious faith should not be afraid of what you just said, because I, I, I come from a, a traditional Christian setting. Okay. But I did work on that through something I learned from Joe Dispenza. And, uh, and then later I got, I, I got on a, a, a call on a zoom call with a, uh, a doctor in Canada who does voice recognition where you speak into something for like 20 seconds. And he was able to give me a whole readout of my biomarkers, but he also gave me a printout that showed the seven chakras. And this was like several years after I had started this journey, all seven were in balance in green. And uh, I, was, I was just like, how do you get that from my voice? And what was interesting was I knew enough about my own markers, they were spot on. They, the areas where I'm a little bit troublesome, that showed and the areas where I'm strong, it showed. And um, so, but, but th that wasn't really my point. My point was, I think, and I wanted to ask you, are you pretty flexible based on if they're Muslim, if they're Hindu, if they're non any kind of religion, they're just spiritual, you're able to kind of work with that? Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. The second point I was going to say too, is I also read the book, was it Many Lives, uh, it Many Lives, Many Masters, or Many... It's by Dr. Brian Weiss. I could be reversing the title for anyone listening. That's okay. But, yeah. but, it, but it was written in the 70s. And he, I believe, was a psychiatrist because he's an MD. But mm -hmm. what he was noticing is that people would remember things. They would be experiencing deja vus. And again, I, I do tend to see this as well. And it's like sometimes they would have memory, like repressed memories come mm. Or mm -hmm. they would have memories come up and they're like, but this wasn't from this light, what's going on? And so he actually wrote this whole book of what's so, because what's so critical to therapy, which is part of how my journey started too, is that we need to bring certain things. Of course, once the body is ready to consciousness. And so segueing into your question that, yes, I believe in scriptures, um, you know, I believe in the Bible, I believe in all these different religions. I know there's a saying of, what was it in physics? It's called energy. Um, in Catholicism, it's called God. In spirituality, yeah. <laughs> it's called higher power. And I, I mean, I say this very lovingly, and sure. very neutrally. Yeah. But it's like you have all these religions. And then on top of that, you have spirituality, but yet theoretically on top of spirituality you have consciousness yeah so mm -hmm. it's almost like it sort of negates the whole that one religion has to be against the other because i was raised jewish sure so that right. so that too has its you know the scriptures and, yeah right 
Yeah. yeah. So, so that has its own set of, you know, different beliefs in there too. So. Right. Yeah. Well, my point in bringing it up too was uh, if a person wants to work with you, they shouldn't fear that, like leaning into that, like be open-minded. And because at the end of the day, what you're really saying is the, the conversation we're having with ourself all day on the inside and 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 the frame, the, the worldview that we shape, our every incoming stimuli matters because how we filter the world affects our health. And if we don't address those things at a core level, you know, I went through emotional and uh, mental release EMR mm-hmm. therapy. I tried it because I uh, I wanted to have it available through someone for our clients. And I was blown away. I'd never done anything like that before. And I found something when I was seven years old that I hadn't let go of. And it, and it had an actual pretty profound impact since then in a positive way. Yeah, around it was around yeah, scarcity. It. it was around scarcity, and it was affecting everything I was doing. Well, it's and it's amazing how it gets passed down through generations. Yep, right. Yeah, well, I, it, and my family is tended to be lower middle class, and I was mm-hmm. the first white collar, first college graduate, first MBA. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to overcome a lot of history with no models. And I'm not saying I have great people. No, no judgment mm-hmm. of my family. I just got into a different world and I had a lot of conditioning that wasn't serving me in this new world I was in. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm just trying to support what you're saying. And and when you work with people, Dr. Goldstein, do you tend to work with them for a year uh, initially? Is it three months? How, how does that work typically? Yeah, so I go visit by visit with people. Um, I mean, I say I can help you feel better after a couple of months. I mean, there was, you know, I never want to make any you know, right. like 100% guarantees, but I do know there were some supplements that especially if people just really aren't feeling well and, you know, need like a good amount of, you know, support, of supplement, yeah, supplement support, yep. um, you know, I do the diet diaries, you know, sometimes I'll even like type out questions that they could noodle on later. Um, you know, I could say, okay, well, maybe there's some great supplements or just the fact that they were listened to. And you could feel better already Huge. walking yeah. out of this. Yeah. Right. It's not so a 10 minute meeting. No. Um, right. And then, but I do tend to attract the people who do, you know, they want to work. They may also understand that this could be a six month process, yep. especially in the beginning. <clears throat> and then depending on where they are, sometimes we go for a year. But I would say a lot of the times, yeah, we're looking at six months and then we could talk about do you want to space them out? You know, this would be a discussion between the both sure. of us. Uh-huh. And then sometimes some wind up eventually coming in maybe quarterly to take yeah. a look at their blood work or to, hey, maybe let's go over some supplements or if a new symptom came up. So, so fortunately, it really affords the conversation, the relationship. But that's such a big benefit too. Yeah, that that's really well said. Um, what... Uh... If somebody wanted to work with you, it looks like you have a QR code there behind your behind your yes. left shoulder. You mm-hmm. just got to lean a little bit over. Yeah, just a little uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that is that how they would start the process with you is scanning that QR code and 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 then also tell us what is the link name or website they can go to also if they are listening to this on audio. Mm-hmm super easy to just go to my website which is what the qr code goes to yep. which is drserenagoldstein.com and that's where you will find everything because i mm-hmm. do have a link where you could book your complimentary 20-minute phone call and again my website will have all the information you need. right so drserenagoldstein.com correct and then they can find you with that so um Fun question, Serena, uh, just to kind of close it up here. Um, if uh, if you had a chance to start all over and it's a fun thing, what would be your fun dream career? And I, and, I, and this is so fun. And, and, and just so the audience knows, Serena had no idea I was going to ask this question. So in fairness to her, and I'm going to give you some time and I'm going to my audience is going to get sick of hearing this but I always wanted to be a CIA operative. And one of my one of my podcast guests said, you know, I'll bet if you look for clues in your life, you're doing it. I couldn't believe when he said that because 
20 years ago when I started doing this microfinance work, I go all kinds of really strange places like Bishkek and Almaty and Tbilisi and Kiev, Ukraine and all these cities that like, if you were watching a James Bond movie, that's where he'd be going. Um, and so I've kind of lived out that life. I speak a somewhat a different language uh, and my dad and his old fart buddies, they get together and they're convinced I'm in the CIA because I go to like Kazakhstan and Tajikistan. And I used to live in Northern Virginia by the by Langley where CIA is. So when I moved there for three years, they were convinced that was it I was in. So the joke in our family is, I don't have, I can't tell you if I am or not. <laughs> the that Tiger is. Medical maybe is just a front business, which it's not, it's legit. But anyway, yeah, did, yeah. I, did I did I buy you enough time to like uh, think about that? Yes, you did. <laughs> and my response is, I'm doing it. That's great. That was your this, dream. Yep. Well, it was the dream that I didn't quite know I had. Because mm -hmm. again, my original path was psychology, was to get a PhD. Sure, right, yep. So, but the way everything transpired and the way everything was resonating, I mean, it's, well, you know, I was going to say long time, but I would say the discussion of time could be a whole other topic because it took, it's taken what it's needed. Yeah, yeah. And everything that I've done, when I think about it, like, oh, I used to love talking to people as a little kid. Yep. I, I was told I would engage with, with adults, just sure. full, on, full on conversations. Oh, I do that a lot now. I love doing PR. I love being out networking. I love traveling and meeting new people. So there's all these characteristics that kind of what you were sharing were adding up. I mean, I always say fun fact, when I went to naturopathic medical school, there was a part of me that was like, yeah, but I only know the herb echinacea. There were honestly some students coming. <laughs> that was that was my one herb that, you know, again, my mom used to use yeah, it. House. Yeah, you knew one more and than I did. did. Yeah. Well, and there were students coming in, oh, they had shadowed this famous herbalist and they had this background and I'm just like, you know what? We'll see what happens. Eventually, we're all going to be learning the same thing. So. Right. That, yeah. That's so cool. Well, you know, you also should be a politician because of all of that. And I'd vote for you if you ran for president this year. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Um, again, drserenagoldstein.com. I would encourage our listeners check on her. Um, especially if you are someone who has a profile who she tends to work with. Um, I know from our own business that this approach to medicine works every single time if you decide to invest as much as the doctor does. Wouldn't you say that, Serena? If, if your patient will invest with you, you can get them better every single time because it's a process. It's not a fad. It's a process. And so thank you for being on the Tiger uh, Optimal Health Podcast. Steve Adams here from Tiger Medical Institute talking about the true health assessment. What if you could safeguard not just your health, but the well-being of your entire family? With the true health assessment from Tiger Medical, you can. Our comprehensive blood screening identifies hidden risks before they become major issues. Our elite team of Mayo Clinic trained and naturopathic physicians then create a customized plan to optimize your health for years to come. When you prioritize your wellness, you ensure you can be fully present for the people you love most. Don't let preventable issues cut that time short. For less than the cost of a daily latte, you can gain peace of mind and a clear path to sustained vitality. Protect your future and your family's future with True Health Assessment from Tiger Medical at thetruehealthassessment.com. Again, that's at thetruehealthassessment.com.